Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Uh, today I'm going to be showing you step by step how to paint this dreamy winter landscape. I'm working on an 18 by 24 primed and stretched canvas. This has been double primed. Um, you can purchase them already primed from the store, but if you want to have um, an extra barrier to protect your uh, paint when applying on the canvas, you can use gesso one to two coats uh, prior to painting. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. I'll show you the colors we're using today. I'll now also have a full list of these colors below the video in the description box. Uh, over here, we've got neon pink, neon orange, and then we've got titanium white, phthalo blue, sap green, and light blue violet. So what I wanna do first is just start uh, with a beautiful uh, morning sunrise using a little bit of pink and orange and white. Uh, I'm going to add a little bit uh, here in the foreground as well, hitting the snow. And then I'm going to dry that off and come in with our first layer of our trees. So if you guys are ready and excited to start painting with me, hit that subscribe and let's begin. All right, the first brush I'm going to be using to start my um, sky with is this number 50 filbert brush. What I'm going to do is just get my brush a little bit wet and then I'm going to pick up some white first and I'm just going to start pulling it across the middle of the canvas back and forth and then I'm going to go into my pink and I'll start adding that partially over that white. That's going to give it some softer tones. I'm going to pick up a little bit more water, wiggle my brush, take some white, still tinted with a little bit of that pink, and I'm just going to add a little bit here in the foreground. Like I said, just so that sunrise, all those pretty colors kind of reflects down on the snow. Okay, the next color I'm going to be taking is white again, and this time I'll be adding a little bit of that beautiful neon orange. And then adding a little bit of that here in the foreground as well. Okay, and then I'm just going to continue both colors, pink and orange, and then a little bit of that white. And I'm just going to turn my brush over so the handle's pointing up. I'm just going to move along, traveling along with my brush while I'm kind of wiggling. And then I'm going to pull and blend. I'll come in with a little bit more and start layering. Okay, without washing my brush off, I'm gonna go right into my light blue violet. And I'm going to start adding that along the top. I'm going to take just a little bit of white with it, mix it up. Now you can turn your brush like this again if you want. I find it just helps me, but you can just apply it however feels comfortable for you. It can be different for every artist, right? We all hold our brushes differently and apply the paint a little differently. So this is just to add some soft shadows up in the sky. And then we'll add some right down here as well. And this is when we can start to create little sweeps and slopes 
in the foreground in the snow. Just gonna get a little bit of water on my brush and then go back into my white. A little bit of that blue again. Take a little bit more blue. It's important to wiggle your brush so that you get the shape back again and get those bristles together. I'm just going to make a few of these shadows, these slopey areas, a little darker, just adding a little bit more paint. And I'll go just with straight blue now. And I'll just add a few more little wiggles. And blend around the top. I'm going to rinse my brush out. And I'm going to add another layer of my orange and my pink. So we've got the softer tones that we used a little bit of white for. Pick up a little bit of white here just for the highlights on the snow. And then highlights up here, very tip of my brush, a little bit of white, pink and orange. I'm going to rinse my brush out once more and I'm going to set it aside now and what I'm going to do is dry this off and come in with our trees. Okay, for my trees, the first layer of trees, I'm going to be using my number 30 filbert brush. I'll be using the following colors, phthalo blue and sap green. I'm going to get my brush a little bit wet and I'm going to begin with taking both those colors and I'll just mix them over here so you can see what a beautiful color that is. And I'm going to start by just Going along here, right along the horizon, and then I'm going to gently pull so you can turn your brush this way and just gently flick up. Take a little bit more water on my brush to help loosen that paint. And this is just going to create a little instant background for our forest. It really helps to have a little bit of water on your brush along with this paint for this technique. It's going to help loosen that paint out of the brush so that you're able to do this technique. So again, all it is, is just a little, I'm just going like this with my wrist. But if you want height, if you want taller trees, and you're gonna have to do both, move your arm and flick your wrist at the same time to make those taller ones. And this is just our sort of our background 
forest. And then what I'm gonna do is take a little bit of my blue violet along with the phthalo blue and the sap green, mix it up, and I'm gonna go right underneath, take it just a little bit more of the blue and create a few more shadows here. It's gonna help us to create a little bit more depth. Okay, then I'll take that blue again with my green and phthalo blue mixed. And I'll start adding the next layer. So just applying this over top and then you can turn your brush this way too. And just pull and flick for some other trees to just stand out, tree trunks to stand out a little bit more amongst those other ones. That's gonna help build up your layers help make your landscape look a little more three-dimensional. And I'm gonna go down a few sizes to a number 16 filbert brush now. I got it a little bit wet and I'm gonna use the same blue and sap green turning to load my brush and then a little wiggle so we have it on the tip and then I'm going to come right under here and start pulling. You got to load up your brush each time so you get a nice a good amount and some darker tree trunks that'll stand out from the rest. Again it's all about creating those layers right? And bring the height up a little bit. And then apply some more color. This time I'm just using straight paint and no water. And I'm going to start pushing and tapping for my branches. Now don't worry too much about making it look like a perfect tree. Um, because we're going to make them just loaded with snow. And they're going to look really messy anyways, have that beautiful, messy, heavy snow look to them. Okay, on to the next one. Push and tap side to side. Really important to take the time to load your brush. Okay, bring this one just up a little bit higher. Okay, and then keep going. Now these ones are smaller and smaller towards the center just to create some perspective, right? The smaller ones uh, here, I'm just going to add a little, a little bit more. Same technique, flick, just a little push and flick. So we're just creating some perspective by adding some smaller trees. making them shorter and shorter. And we will be going over with uh, a dry brush to make these look uh, even more in the distance and to also create a beautiful um, kind of foggy look and a misty look. I was like having a few trees that are leaning a little bit.
and you can paint any of these uh, winter landscapes here on my channel and in this playlist. Um, you can paint them on any surface you want. So if you want to paint them on Christmas ornaments, um, by the way, if you haven't seen my tutorials for handmade, hand-painted um, Christmas ornaments that look like you spent hours on them and and or spent a lot of money on them, but they're really done with a few brush strokes, limited palette, and a few items from the dollar store. You really need to check those out. They're quite popular and um, they make wonderful gifts. And I've been making those and selling them, gifting them for many, many years. But the some of the supplies that I get really has been low stock at the stores and they've been running out early in the season. So you, to get them, you need to get a jump on it and, and pick up your supplies before it they all go out of stock. I'm just gonna bring that up a little bit higher. Okay, so we've got this layer and I'm gonna dry this off and then come in with our dry brush. I'll be using a little bit of white, maybe a little bit of a light blue violet in some areas over here to give it more of a cool uh, winter morning look, but keep keep it with the beautiful soft pastel colors. So it's just that perfect winter morning with a warm sunrise and the pastel minty frosty tones. Now, I almost forgot a step. When, now that this is dried off, before I just skipped one, I was about to jump one step ahead. I want to apply the snow on the trees and then dry that off and then come in with um, the dry brush effect. So I'm going to continue using, um, actually, yeah, I'll continue using this, these, this brush. And then I might go down to a, a smaller size or two for the smaller trees. Um, I might be able to do it. I just don't want to cover up um, all of the branches. So because this is what I used to create the original size and branches with, I may just have to let off on the pressure a little bit in order to keep the contrast and base color of the trees separate from the snow. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Now what I want to do is come in with, uh, because these are going to be in shadow, I'm going to come in with my light blue violet. Now, if you don't have this color, you can easily make it by taking uh, titanium white with a little bit of cobalt blue or ultramarine blue. So both blues are very similar and you'll get uh, somewhat of a variation really close to this. Okay. And I'm just going to start with the paint on the tip of my brush like this, and I'm going to start dabbing it on dabbing and dabbing applying it to most of the branch branches on the tree but making sure that I leave some of that dark base underneath because we need that for uh, the contrast and to help make this look um, a little bit more 3d right So once you get the hang of um, using this brush for your trees, you're going to love it. I find it to be a lot more controlled um, to use. It's easier for my students too. Everybody thinks, you know, that you need to use a fan brush for painting trees and that's the only one. I'm sure you can use that, but I'll tell you what, from my experience, uh, over the years, and like I said, teaching, my students do um, way, way better and are way happier using a filbert brush for their trees. I guarantee you're going to love it. Um, and it doesn't matter what brush. I don't have a magic brush. It's not the brush I'm using. You don't need to go and purchase this one that I have. And if I did have a link for it, I would leave it for you here for you guys. But it's just something that I got years ago in a, in a set and uh, you know the the brand isn't even on they were just no name 
um, and then I happen to luck out. So you really don't have to spend a lot of money on um, brushes for them to be good. I use a lot of inexpensive brushes, makeup brushes sometimes, so you guys know that if you've been following my channel for a while. But like, let's just have a look at this, see how pretty that light blue violet is uh, over top of our dark mixture of phthalo blue and sap green against that peachy coral sky. Uh, just reminds me of all the beautiful winters I experienced growing up in the Canadian Rockies. I grew up around uh, Golden, BC, and it's just, it doesn't get more Rockies than that. It's just really in the heart of the Rockies and absolutely breathtaking mountains all around us. And this is what it looks like. So I'm kind of just painting from uh, memory of what I experienced growing up there and living there for over 30 years. And this may be familiar to you depending on where you live in the world and what your winters look like. Winter is cold and it can be dark, but don't forget about the beautiful sunsets you can experience and sunrises. It has its warmth magic and beauty it's just the days are are very short so you gotta get up earlier <laughs> let's just bring that guy up a little bit higher and then i like to just take a little bit of this color i'm using which is the light blue violet and apply a few more shadows. You can go over top of existing ones. You can make new ones up or just add new ones. So if you have trouble getting the coverage you want, when you're pulling your brush and paint and you see all those little spaces, the canvas showing through, don't get too frustrated and don't always think you need to go back for more paint. It can be a little bit of water that you just need to add to your brush. Don't add too much water though, otherwise you'll be left with no color. It'll just be so transparent once it dries and you'll be unhappy. So it's finding that, that right balance. Okay, we've got another tree here. One more tree here on this side before we can dry this off and apply that misty fog. And if you want, you can go ahead and add another layer of this because the darker base is dominant. In this case, it's going to show up through that blue. So if you want it, your blue to show up more, then you're going to have to wait a little bit for it to dry and add more. Now, just before I add um, my uh, foggy filter, <laughs> I'm going to take a little bit more of my white and my orange here and just add a little bit more white. A few little breaks in the clouds here, letting in just a little bit more light because it looks pretty solid right here. And it's kind of nice, but I think we could break that up a little bit. Maybe we'll just bring a little bit more life to the sky with just, you know, just a little hint of it like that. Uh, and then I also want to go back and add, and I'm just mixing what I've got left here of this pink and orange and a little bit of white. And then getting it just on the tip of my brush here, I'm going to add just a few little wiggles. See, I'm holding my brush the same way as I was holding my number 30 and number 50. 
So just a little bit more white sometimes. You just pull it in like that to load your brush and then very light pressure. A little bit like that. And then add a little bit more color. Okay, I'm ready to dry this off now. Okay, so now I can come in and start adding a dry brush with the white. And I'm gonna be using my number 30 filbert brush again. And you just want to have it a little bit damp. So this is still a bit damp from washing it and drying it out. And all I'm going to do is just take a little bit of white like this. I'm going to add a little bit of the light blue violet. So I'm just tinting that white and making it a little bit light, light blue. And I'm going to start, I want it to look misty over here and farther away. So that's why we're applying this. And I'm just going to start very lightly. Kind of crisscross. So you can see already the difference from one side to the next. I'll take a little bit more paint. Take a little bit more white. And just add a little bit on the base as well. I think that looks quite pretty. Go ahead and add some. Just picking up a little bit more water and making sure I don't have it too wet. Start adding some here now. I'm gonna start right here. And then I'm gonna stop. I'm not gonna add any more over here. I'll just bring it a little bit, a little bit more over. These ones are farther away, so they're gonna be a little bit layered more than these ones here. Okay, so now what I want to do with this brush while I still have it is I want to take a little bit more of that blue, maybe just a little bit of that previous tree base color we used. And I'm going to add some more shadows along the side here. I'm gonna need a little bit more water on my brush. Pull in a little bit of white. And then I'm gonna come right across the bottom here. I'm gonna to leave a little bit of the peachy tones. just because you know it is the sunrise in the morning so we need to build up a little bit more atmosphere and shadows so you can use a little bit more of the green or the phthalo or the blue violet uh, if you want and just kind of play around with it If you have a little scumble like this and move around, you'll get a few more patchier looking shadows and little lumps and bumps in your snowy banks and hills.
Okay, and then I'm going to come in and be a little bit more generous with my light blue violet. Just because I think this color in particular is so pretty with all the peach. I'm going to rinse my brush out. And I want to add a little bit more. Just had to rinse my brush out because it was starting to build up with too much paint, and that can ruin your brush and the shape of it. So sometimes you just need to rinse your brush out and go back to that color again. Okay, so I just want to go on the top and add more of this blue. This is going to just help to create more of that mood that we want in that time of day, more atmosphere and just everything. And all I'm doing is just going in between those peach areas, picking a few spots and just adding a little bit more like that. Yeah, I'll be taking a little bit of that. Oops. Palette's getting all bunched up. A little bit more of that mint color too. It's so pretty that a little bit of blue, green, or phthalo blue. I've got two blues. Don't want to confuse you. The phthalo blue sap, green, and a little bit of white. And this is very pretty to add as well. Then all the colors just really go together nicely. You're just tying in all those colors everywhere, right? Okay, I'm rinsing out my brush. You know, you can add that scumble of that mist over the center, or in case I did, but I'm seeing now that I want to take a little bit of it off just to grab that pink and peach back again and make that pop out a little bit more. Okay, so now I'm going to be coming in with my next layer of trees. These ones are going to be larger. And... For those, I'm going to be using to start my number 16 filbert again, and then I might go to my number 30 filbert again for the branches. Okay, so I'm going to take my green and my blue again. I only have a little bit of water on my brush. I'm going to take a little bit of the orange. This is going to give me a dark brown color. I'm going to bring this over here. Let's move it over here so we can get a dark tree trunk color, a little bit more blue, green. Okay, so you can see the color is almost black. It's got that brown in there to warm it up. It's got like a nice dark chocolate color. Okay, and I think maybe we'll have a few rows of trees right in here. So I'm just a little bit on an angle like this. Need a bit of water just to help release that paint out. Let's mix it up again, make a little more. 
And I'm just going to add a few little, little twigs, branches, loose ones here on the tree before we come in with our, our main ones. And then I think I'll add one, maybe a little further back. So let's make this one look farther away. We're going to start it back further. Okay, then. Take the same color, just over a little bit more here, and then add those little, little branches again. You can use a liner brush for that too if you want for this step. Everything's going to be covered in snow, so I'm not worried about anything looking too perfect. Before I wash my brush out, I'm going to take some of this um, light blue violet, mix it with that color, and add a bit more of a shadow, darker. This will help to create a little bit more atmosphere as well. I'm going to rinse my brush out now. And I just want to make sure this is nice and dark, so I'm going to apply another layer to my tree trunk. I want it to be separate from the shadow underneath. It's got to be, the tree's got to be darker than the shadow, right? I think this is a nice color for the tree trunk though, don't you? So we can start to just come down and scoop a little bit to begin the shape that we want our branches to be in. And I'm going to use this for um, the smaller branches at the top, and then I'll switch over to um, probably my number 30 filbert, and I'm going to use the blue and the green. I'll use just a little bit of that brown color that we made. And I'm going to start tapping Make sure you go over the tree trunk as well. And again, remember, don't worry too much about perfecting your branches because they're going to be loaded with snow. So I'm going to use this for the top of this tree as well. And then I'll be switching over to my number 30. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. There's a number, another number 30 over here that's a little bit older and I like this one for these branches because see it's a little bit poofy from all the use it's 
gotten over the years and I think that'll make for some better branches. So let me use this one. No water on my brush, just again, loading up. And yeah, it's perfect. Now I know that it can be scary adding this dark color over that beautiful background that we created, but you've just got to be brave and think of the end result and think that doing something that scares you is making you a better artist. You're growing as an artist every time you step out of your comfort zone to do a painting like this, okay? I believe in you guys and I know that you can do this. I'm going to add a little bit more here in the center. So we've got some branches in the front too, making our tree look a little thicker. And then I'll come over to the other side. I'm going to just add a little bit more of my neon orange here. If you're curious, it's by Holbein. I like the earthiness that it brings to the blue and the green for these branches. So I'm just going to go over the branches I made earlier. And I tend to do better with painting trees when I don't stop to think about what I'm doing too much. I kind of just trust on my brush and kind of develop a rhythm. I know it's not like that for everybody when they're, especially when you're first starting out. And certainly when I was first starting out, I wasn't as comfortable. But just, just know that with time and practice, you'll get to the point where you are comfortable and it will be kind of almost like meditative and You'll just, without even thinking about it or realizing it, you'll have painted a tree. That's just what happens when you practice a lot with anything, right? Okay, so we've got some nice shadows going on as well. Just a little bit darker here. I will be adding some snow to the base. Just want it to feel uh, more in shadow here and a little bit more silhouette. And I'm going to come in and start adding some snow over top of these trees. But I want to dry this off first. So I'll just give this a quick dry with my hair dryer. Okay, now that it's dried off, there may be a few areas where I've applied the paint a little bit thicker and you can tell they're a little bit wet still because it's shiny looking. Um, but for the most part, it's dry. I'm back over to my number 16 filbert brush and I'm gonna take some of my blue and I'm gonna start applying it over top here. This is the blue that I'm using. I just need to reload it on my palette, but it's a uh, Liquitex Basics. 99% of the paint that I use is by this brand. It's wonderful. And my neons, of course, are by Holbein, or Holbein, however you pronounce it. OK, 
Okay, so we've got quite a bit. I find that these paints are quite affordable too, and for um, the quality, they just work for everybody. They're decent priced, and like I said, the quality is good. And I recommend what I use to all of my students and everybody watching. It wouldn't be fair if I was uh, using something else and not sharing it with you. And I don't make any money off of any of the links that I share. I just want you guys to get the chance to paint with some nice products that aren't gonna break the bank. Because I know a lot of people, there's misconceptions. They think, oh, I can't start painting because it's too expensive. I can't afford it. Okay, so look how pretty that looks. Now you could go, you know, you really could go a little bit lighter. If you want more of a frosty look for your tree and not snow, all you're going to do is apply less. So you would just add a little bit here and there. Um, but I am showing you guys a really snow covered winter landscape today and so i'm adding a little bit more now the green blue base that we applied is dominant it's darker than what we're adding and this blue is a little it's not completely opaque so it's a little transparent and that's why you're left with seeing some of the base dark colors show through and that's why this works so well because you've got it's creating a mid-tone the dark base peeking through so after this is dry I can come back and add a little bit more of the light blue violet to some of the branches leaving this first layer as well as oh, this first blue layer I should say as well as leaving the main base layer. So what I also like to do is just take a little bit of that color of the snow I'm using, or the color I'm using for the snow, and then just catch the base of the tree and apply a little bit of snow. So if you kind of just tap and then pull and drag, you can get kind of that skiff of snow look to your tree trunks. And we'll just add a little bit over the shadow so it all blends together. And then I still wanna have a little bit of the dark, dark base. So I'm gonna take those three colors again, sap green, phthalo, and a bit of orange. And I'm gonna go up back side where the snow hasn't hit it and I'll tap in a little bit more on my trip trunk just making that stand out a bit more right it just gives us some more shadow and makes our tree look more real makes it stand out more in, in focus from the background So what I'm going to do is take a little bit of white with that blue now, clean brush, mix the two. So I'm just bringing that light blue violet a shade or two brighter. And I'm going to just go on the inside a little bit just to give this some more uh, 3D-ness. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just so that it's not all the same shade of blue and we've got a little bit different light it'll make the snow kind of look rounded and a little heavier and of course 
because we're using acrylic, this is gonna dry a little bit lighter or a little bit darker, depending on if you're using um, opaque or transparent paints. So if you come back a few hours later or the next day or whatever, and you notice that your paint has dulled and it just doesn't pop like it did when you uh, were working on it and left it, um, that's why, and it's normal. Don't, don't think you did anything wrong. It's not you, it's just the acrylic paint. And it could be the canvas you're using as well. Some canvases are better and hold and take the paint better than others. I don't recommend using, um, I feel bad saying this, but like, I have to be honest, a lot of the dollar store canvases are so thin, they're almost see-through, so your paint really has nothing to stick to. It's just, you need to have, um, you don't have to have like really expensive canvas, just somewhere in between, something in between. Okay, so I think it would be kind of nice to have a little cabin in the distance. So I'm going to use uh, number four filbert. I've got paint covering up most of the handles on my brushes, so that's why it kind of like takes me a while to figure out how the size is. This is a number four filbert. Um, keep in mind you can use something smaller if you want it doesn't have to be a filbert either you could use a flat brush if you want because this is farther away and it's going to have less edges to it because it's farther away and everything in the distance looks a little softer plus we're going to have snow on the roof so what i'm going to do is start with my dark base a little bit of that orange and blue and green and i am just going to paint a rectangle okay just a rectangle and then I'm gonna add oh, let's have the roof coming from here so diagonal a diagonal line there there and then we'll have another little diagonal we'll just paint like a little triangle right here and then bring that down a little bit more so now it still kind of looks like a rectangle just a, a messy one lopsided one so it's going to make sense once i apply um, the highlight the snow on the roof you'll be able to see it better um, but first i'm going to take some of that orange mix it up with that blue the green a little bit of white in there, right? And I'm just going to pull across for the front of our cabin and then across the other side. Washing my brush out, drying it off. And I'm going to take my blue, make sure my bristles are together and I'm just going to place my pinky here where I know that the painting is dry and this is going to help me have more control over applying this paint. Okay, and then I'm just going to go across the roof line and pull, pull, pull. I'm going to go just under the roof line now with my dark base again. So right underneath. And just tap along the front of the house, the lines. And I'm going to dry this off and then come back in with some more details for our cabin.
Okay, so I'm going to take just a little bit of white here. Mix it with a bit of the blue. And I'll add my next layer of snow on the roof. I'm going to leave a little diagonal line for our chimney because the, there'll be a shadow from the chimney. And then I'm gonna just get a little bit more paint, blue and white, on the tip of my brush and bring some snow on the other side of the roof line. And then I'm gonna come down here and add a little bit of snow to the base of the house, to make it look tucked in there, nestled in there, cozy. We'll add a few windows as well, and I'll be using my neon orange and white for the light. I'm going to apply the chimney first, though, so I'll be taking the dark color that I made, orange, blue, and green, on the very tip of my brush. I'll add just a little dab there for the chimney, and again, we've got that shadow there. That's what that little line is for. And... I'm going to take a little bit of blue and white, add a little bit of snow, and a little, we're going to create some smoke coming out, so just a little wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. And if it doesn't show up, because we've already got that color for our background, just take a little bit more white. Okay, so a little line, wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. And just want to make sure that's going to show up. So I'm going to apply just a little bit more. Now we can add our windows. I'm going to use a liner brush for my windows. I'm, I've got a short liner brush here. And I'm just going to take a little bit of my orange and my white. And all we're going to do is add little dabs because it's far away. So we, we're not going to see a lot of detail on the windows. And I like to see all the lights on in the house because I think it looks like there's more people there and it looks extra cozy and there's just a lot of life in the house. So just a few little windows like that. And then a little bit of light from those windows casting down outside on the snow. I'll add a little door, um, just a little bit of white with the dark colors. You can paint your door any one of these colors mixed with a bit of white, just so that it shows up a little bit better. And if it doesn't show up, use a bit more white or make it darker. So you'll either need it to be darker or lighter than what the background is. In this case, I need it to be just a little bit brighter. So I'm just gonna add a little bit right there. And maybe it'll look like some snow around the, the door. Now for the snow going up the tree, it's all the same color of blue. And I wanna just add that other lighter shade of blue that we made for the tree, the branches. So I just picked up a little bit more white and I'm going to turn my brush over like this and apply it like you would with a palette knife. Get more of that patchy look. And then right in here, I'm going to use my liner brush. This is how I would paint a lot of my winter scenes to really make it look like the trees in the foreground were really covered with snow. So I'm just gonna apply a thicker layer and make it look slightly rounded here, but I'm not gonna cover up all of the existing blue. I'm just adding a little bit more right here. But see how, how it makes it look even more in the foreground and separate. It makes it stand out a lot more from everything else. So we are really bringing in more focus to this tree. Now 
I'm going to remind you guys, if you're enjoying this video, uh, please feel free to subscribe to my channel. It's free. And also leave a comment below letting me know that you liked this, that you found it helpful. I love hearing from you guys. It matters to me. You, a lot of people think that us YouTubers don't have time to read comments. I make the time. It's important to me connecting with my subscribers as well as uh, my patrons. If you will ever want one-on-one -on -one, um, critiquing advice for your paintings, plus, well, there's lots too much to mention, but Patreon is a wonderful way that you can um, help support what it is I do here and make a difference. Really, really helps fund the making of my videos and all my art supplies. Okay, so I'm just going to add a little bit more to this tree here. Again, just adding some white to the blue. Okay, well, this was really fun. I hope you guys enjoyed it too. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch and I hope you guys want to paint along. I'll see you all soon in my next video. Bye!